uh, is everyone able to see my screen yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so what is the noun first thing we will start with a noun okay now most of us know what is a noun noun is generally a name or something you know a name given to something okay a reference to something is usually done by a name okay that name generally is known as a noun now there are two types of nouns one is a proper noun and the other is a common noun proper nouns are uh names as such okay let's say you want to refer to a person a place a thing or an idea or anything more okay in all these cases if you are referring to a person you will call him by his name so an example is given here george washington if you are referring to a place you will call it by its name america india if you are referring to a month you will call it by a name october okay so all these names as such are called proper nouns okay now there is something called common nouns also common nouns is more generalistic or uh, it is not about one particular person it is not talking about one person but it is rather talking about a group of something okay so when you look at this table you will understand it clearly proper noun is mexico that's the name of a country but what is country then country is also a noun but it's a common noun that's the difference that's all okay just like that mr finch that's a name uh, sorry not mr miss finch that's a name that's a proper noun woman is a common noun here english proper noun name of a language language common noun okay just like that december or october any of the name of the months they are all proper nouns the other one month that's a common noun so quickly let's just finish this off france tell me proper or a common noun proper proper rope common common united states proper proper professor hall proper proper anyone has a doubt common noun here sir no oh, okay why no professor what if it's a name sir i name have yes yes it's a very it's a very common uh, uh, doubt common noun Uh, why why do you think it's a common noun uh, because there's no Sorry? name specific Once more. it's not specific there's no name yeah yeah you are thinking about a professor's hall a hall which belongs to a professor right you're yeah. thinking something like that alle right? hmm. or is it something else okay uh, what uh, who is this who was this varun or uh, shafif who was this so we shafif shafif okay okay shafif the thing here is that to understand the difference between proper noun and common noun okay these girls these girls are smart okay they understood one thing they observed one thing that i never told anyone that i usually tell them when they reach here Mexico, Miss Finch, English, McGraw Hill, American Airlines, December. All of them are starting with what? What do you see common in all of them? They have all got a capital letter. Very good. Who is this? 
alfi <laughs> okay so they have all got a alfi is yeah. doing the second round of grammar okay so grammar is free for everyone so people can rejoin and do grammar as many times as they want so alfi is rejoining it and doing it the second time so you'll have a lot of answers from alfi okay so alfi yes sir time for you to shine okay <laughs> okay so <clears throat> all these words are starting with a capital letter so whenever you see a word starting with a capital letter you can understand that it's a name it's not talking about a hall where professors are sitting or a hall which is for professors nothing like that this is starting with if that had been the case if that was the case it would have been written in small letter but since this is written in capital letters this is definitely a name okay so wherever you use understood wherever you use english yeah. many a times people will write english with a small e not right absolutely wrong hindi with a small h wrong okay so all these um, you know the the trick here is to understand that whenever you are seeing something with capitals generally it will be a proper noun okay okay so professor common 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 noun stadium common common the olympics proper proper the the no kanda uh, lo, don't look at the, the 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 just look at this word olympics proper noun proper proper, proper noun right yes yes okay horses common okay dr blanchard proper proper noun our school common common okay great so okay so next thing many a times when i am teaching you i talk about subject verb object okay many a times when i teach you i talk about this what is a subject what is a verb what is an object okay so let's understand what is a subject what is a verb and what is a object for that i think i have a better book to teach you guys at one second please give me a minute on this yes this one so to understand the subject first thing you need to understand that in english there are many types of sentences okay one is called a declarative sentence we will we will learn declarative sentence declares some information or gives out some information okay and then there are imperative sentences uh, like uh, imperative sentences do not have a subject you do not need to know all of this but i'm just giving you this for your understanding just a brief you know overall understanding i'll i'll in fact uh, put it here as a note okay so declarative sentences are there then there is imperative sentence then interrogative okay and uh, what else uh, there is one more type of sentence what is the fourth type uh, there is one more there is one more okay fine 
you don't have to be worried about it most of the times we are concerned or we are writing declarative sentences we are declaring some information okay imperative sentences i'll give you a few example no smoking that's an imperative sentence be quiet um cctv surveillance okay such words such sentences is there a subject here are we asking somebody not to smoke have we mentioned that person's name ram no smoking rahim no smoking is there a person here no person is mentioned so there is no subject here okay such sentences which do not have a subject are called imperative sentences we generally do not write such sentences in you know uh, our day to day english uh, when we are uh, specifically in a english test you will not be using such sentences these sentences are only used to give uh, instructions short instructions okay so generally boards and all your sign boards and all will have such imperative sentences okay declarative sentence my name is ram okay i am declaring something i am giving out an information so simple sentences in fact all the sentences that we will be using will be declarative sentence interrogative sentence questions all types of questions interrogation interrogative interrogate okay all types of questions will come in interrogative sentences okay so that's why i have brought you here declarative sentence and word order okay okay now when we are talking about a declarative sentence it has a subject and a predicate you will ask me now so what is a subject and a predicate look at this example this one mary speaks english okay who is the doer here whom are we talking about you guys have to answer respond and things like that okay it's not like writing who is the doer here or whom are we talking about mary mary okay we are talking about mary so mary is the subject the doer is always the subject or in malayalam you can call it as the main kada patram <laughs> of the sentence okay that's how you, that's the best malayalam that i would be able to put it here so understand it like that today one very famous singer in malayalam industry died malayalam tamil malayalam and tamil sp balasubramanian sp do you guys know yes have you guys heard yes yes so sp balasubramanian a very famous uh, what would i say artist musician yeah. singer uh, from is, south india is popular for सलमान खान वो पुरानी पुरानी मूवीज थी ना सलमान की उन सब ने किया सो ओके सो कमिंग बैक लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव ओके नाउ सो वी अंडरस्टूड दैट मेरी इज अ सब्जेक्ट ओके दिस लास्ट पार्ट व्हाटएवर दिस मेरी इज डूइंग or whatever happens to mary okay that's called predicate 
so a declarative sentence is made of two things one is a subject and one is a predicate subject is the doer or somebody who does something or the effect falls on that person of the action okay and whatever action has happened whatever is the result is called the predicate okay so understand this and one second guys yes i was uh, i was worried if i am recording this or not okay i'm recording it so fine okay so let's look at one more sentence okay john repairs the car who is the subject here john what is the predicate repairs the car the car repairs the car okay the boys ran into the forest who is the subject the boys the boys okay predicate Ran, ran into the forest. forest ran into the forest okay this much we understood what is the subject and what is the predicate subject plus predicate makes a declarative sentence okay okay now do you see something different here here the subject has become plural it has become the boys till now the subject was singular mary singular john singular the boys here the subject became plural so we can simply say the subject can be one or many right there is no limitation to the number of subjects that we can have subject can be one or there can be many subjects that you want to use okay okay so let's look at this sentence okay what is the subject here all of us are looking for a name she. look for something that replaces a name yes she okay she is what she is a pronoun a pronoun is what pronoun is something that replaces a noun that takes the place of a noun okay every time we do not want to write a sentence like mary speaks english mary repairs the car mary has never been to england no at some point we will refer back to mary as she the she word is a pronoun here the subject is a pronoun so one more thing we realized that subject can be a noun a pronoun also okay and uh, she is it singular or is it plural singular singular okay so that's what they have written here she is a singular pronoun subject okay the rest of the sentence has never been to england okay that is called the predicate look at the next sentence we shall visit them soon subject is we what we subject is singular or plural 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 we okay and uh, is it a noun or is it a pronoun 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 okay good so my point was what i wanted you guys to understand is subject of a sentence subject understood what is the subject okay okay so that's what this line is saying here that the subject can be a proper noun common noun one more thing it can be just now we realized what was it 
it can also be a she he pronoun pronoun and it can be singular or plural okay okay so uh tell me what type of sentence is this where is the school what type of sentence is this interrogative interrogative correct okay interrogative we are not concerned with these these sentences because we are not writing questions in the ielts exam you will not be writing questions in your essay that's against the rules right you cannot put questions there so i will not be teaching you anything related to interrogative sentences we will be mostly learning about declarative sentences so juanita is a friend of mine who is the subject here juanita juanita okay fine okay now the main topic that we were talking about is the sub the topic in english we were talking about is nouns okay within nouns we understood that nouns generally form the subject of a sentence nouns not only nouns pronouns can also take the place okay so we understood what is a subject of a sentence now let's understand what is a object okay so if there is a subject there has to be a object also now the object is a part of the predicate where did it go yes here okay object is inside this predicate in this sentence mary speaks english the object is english most of the times on most of the common sentences when you break the predicate you will find a verb the verb here is speak or speaks and you will also find a object the object here is english so now we know three elements of the language mary mary is the subject okay speaks speaks is the verb english english is the object object is something on which the action of the doer who is the doer here mary is the doer here mary is doing something what is she doing that's a verb okay what is she doing she is speaking that's a verb and what speaking what that becomes the object okay many a times sentences might not just have one object they might have many objects so we classify them as direct object and indirect object okay that's why we classify them as direct object and indirect object okay now there is a simple way or a very simple technique to find out the subject uh, the objects of a sentence okay so this is the method to figure out what is the subject and what is an object of a sentence okay so let's look at the sentence sara likes my brother sara likes my brother that's the sentence okay the first step step number 1 find the subject of the sentence who is the subject here sara. it's written there sara sara okay second step find the verb in the sentence who is the verb likes like sara the like. the action or the emotion that sara has is sara likes okay so that becomes a verb okay third question whom or what with the subject and the verb what with this sara and what with this likes who does sara like 
or what does Sarah like? Can we ask this? Whom does Sarah like? Can we ask this part of the question? Yes. Yes, if we ask this question to ourselves. Whom yes. does Sarah like? What is the answer? My brother. 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 Okay, or my brother. Fine. That's okay. Okay. So, who is the object now? Brother. Brother. Okay. Brother. So, we found out the object. Okay. First thing is, look at this um, subject of a sentence. Then look at the kriya or the action that the subject is doing. Okay. And then the third thing, ask yourself, who or what? Okay, who is this subject and this verb acting on, or what is this subject or the verb acting on? Once you do that, the answer that you get, that answer becomes the object of a sentence. Okay. Chalo, with this, you guys would be realizing something, and let me ask you one question. Is language an art or is language a science? Art. Art. The rest of us are what? Today we are having a monvarat or something? Art. Art, okay. Art. Language is an art. Most of us will say that, right? No, language is a science. All languages are sciences. Okay. Language is not a part of art. Language is a part of science. It follows a set of rules. And that rules, those set of rules is what you are getting to know. You're, you're, you're understanding the first basic rules, like addition or subtraction in mathematics. Like that, we are understanding the first few basic rules of language, of English language, or of any language, I would say. Any language would have a subject and a predicate. The predicate, if you break it further, can break can be broken into a verb and objects. It can be one object or many objects. Okay. So these are the rule. Many many rules will come. So please understand, language is not an art. Everything has a reason. Many people say English is a very uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, what? So uh, they'll they'll may, they'll change things as they please. Okay. Sometimes they'll say this is right. Sometimes they'll say that is right. But for all of that, there is a rule behind it. And English is the language which has the highest number of these grammatical elements or grammar rules. So that is why it becomes so difficult to advance in English to a very high level. Okay. Other languages do not generally have that level of grammar okay so okay so moving on now these objects that you saw here that is my brother let's do this example also the girls find a book who is the subject girls girls what is the action they did find find and what is the object book girls found what Book. What did the girls found find? Book. Book. A book. Okay. So a book becomes the object. Okay. Now in both these cases. My brother and book. Both these. They are both called direct objects. Now, if there is something called a direct object, then there should be something called a indirect object. Okay. Now, indirect object comes before the direct object. Okay. Sometimes we do not need, uh, we might need more than one object. Okay. Sometimes in a sentence, we might need more than one object. So in that case, in such cases, you have one direct object and you have one indirect object. 
Okay. Again, there are some steps to find an indirect object. But before I uh, do that, let's look at these examples. Justin buys the girl a magazine. Justin buys the girl a magazine. How many is a subject? Who is the subject here? Justin. What is the action he is doing? Buys. 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 Now, who is the object here? The girl or magazine? Who is the object? Both of them are object. Okay. Both of them are objects. The subject's action is falling on both of them. So both of them are objects. But one is direct, one is indirect. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. We understood who is the subject of a sentence. We understood who is the verb of a sentence. Verb in the sentence. Okay. To the same question. To whom or for whom? Subject and verb. Okay. So let's say uh, Justin buys for whom? For whom did Justin buy something? The girl. The girl. Okay. For whom did Justin buy? The girl. Mm -hmm. This answer, the girl, is your indirect object. Okay. Or let's do the uh, previous one. When we were finding out the direct object, we asked, the question we asked ourselves was, who or what? Okay. The question format was subject plus verb plus whom or what. This was our question. The answer to this question was the object. Okay. In this case, we are asking to whom or for whom. So the uh, once again, I want to put a comment here like that. Yes. So subject plus. Uh, verb plus for whom or to whom. If you ask this question, you will get the answer of you will get indirect object. Okay. If you ask this. you will get the direct object. So people who are making notes can make notes here. They can write this thing down. This thing will help you find the direct object. This thing. Look at the mouse where it is. OK. This thing will help you find the indirect object. Let's do one more example for indirect object so that we get clear. OK. OK, let's look at this. Mother gives Nate $5. Mother gives Nate $5. OK, first thing we are going to do is we'll find out who's the uh, direct object. OK, let's find out who is the direct object. So who is the subject here? Mother. 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 What is the verb? Gives. OK. Gives. And to find the direct object, what do we need to ask? We need to ask ourselves mm -hmm. this. What? Okay, so mother, what did mother do? Mother gives, subject is mother, and here, mother gives what? 
What did mother give? What did mother give? Dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. Okay. So mother gave five dollars. That becomes this five dollars becomes the direct object. Okay. Now we will ask the second question. The second question is this that you can see in the box. Subject mother. Okay. You can see it in the yellow box. Subject is mother. Okay. What is the verb? Gives to whom? To whom? The third the third part of the question. Nate. 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 Okay. To whom did she give? To Nate. She gave it to Nate. So Nate becomes the indirect object. When you do it the first or the second time, this will be. Uh, it might take you two or three seconds to process it and to you know come with a come up with an answer, or you might not get it as a whole. But slowly and gradually, you will see sentences coming up in your brain, or you will be able to see sentences in this subject, verb, and an object format. You will be very clear on what is a direct verb, what is an indirect verb, uh, um, uh, object. Okay, direct object, and what is a indirect object? Okay, so uh, okay, predicate. <coughs> predicate i have already told you what is a predicate a predicate is a verb plus a plus the object okay or whatever it can be many other things also okay you can have many other things on the, also in a predicate predicate as such does not have a very solid definition in grammar okay predicate you can just understand predicate is something that is other than the subject Okay, as uh, you can see here, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, here. Okay, sentence is just these two elements broadly. Okay, then this predicate breaks into a verb, there might be an object, uh, a direct object, an indirect object, uh, there might be articles, there might be uh, um, uh, what prepositions, uh, many, many other things can also be here within this element okay predicate so predicate is not just one thing but many things put together okay so okay so coming back if you look at this sentence maria helps us okay here the predicate is made up of helps and us so the predicate includes a verb that's what they are saying verb as a predicate okay the next sentence if you look verb phrase as a predicate here the phrase is verb phrase is helps with the gardening okay so who is the subject maria what is a predicate all of this is a predicate this predicate can be broken down into even smaller things here helps Helps is the verb. Okay. The is an article. Gardening. What is gardening? Object. Object. Okay. But uh, verb, I know. Uh, is it a verb? Is it a noun? Is it what is it? Verb. 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 Okay. We are using it here as a verb. Great. Okay. Now, sometimes the predicate part of the sentence, okay, 
which is the predicate part the second part of the sentence might have a noun okay something like this my mother wants to be a doctor this word a doctor this is a noun so it's not necessary that the predicate will not have a noun the only the subject will have a noun or a pronoun can only be made by uh, uh, anything that's a noun or a pronoun is a uh, subject never think like that a noun or a pronoun can also be used in the predicate i'm showing you that here so what did we understand till now that a sentence is made up of or a declarative sentence the sentences that we are concerned with these sentences are made up of two elements one is a subject and one is a predicate subject is generally a noun or a pronoun okay predicate is a combination of many things can have many things can have just one thing can have just two things can have whatever okay uh you can have a verb there we can have a object there you can have a indirect object there you can have a preposition article all these other uh, elements of grammar can be put there in the predicate okay so understood what is a subject and a predicate yes sir okay okay now we are going to identify them this becomes very important this exercise because it looks very simple but many people go wrong here okay claudia likes bread okay <clears throat> uh you have to look at the the exercise is asking us to look at the italicized word in each sentence decide how it is used then write subject okay we have to tell if this italicized word like this italics words in italics all these words we have to figure out if they are a subject direct object indirect object or predicate noun okay okay so claudia likes bread bread what is bread who is the subject here Claudia. Claudia. What is the verb? Likes. Likes. Claudia likes whom? Bread. Bread. You are getting a very simple answer. So what is it? Direct object. Object. Direct object. Direct object. Okay. Okay. Fine. The boys. Subject. This is simple. Subject. Okay. The girls found some money. Some money. Just girls found what? some money some money so what does this become direct object object direct object direct object okay okay uh okay my father is an engineer direct object okay direct object or yeah we can call it a direct object fine that's enough i sent my sister a telegram hmm indirect object hmm indirect object indirect object okay who is the direct object here i sent i sent what that is what you have to ask i sent what what did i send telegram telegram okay okay tell me who is the direct object here thomas buys what three red roses red roses exactly that becomes a direct object for whom did thomas buy this serena so what is serena indirect object indirect object indirect object okay okay mm, question questions i'm gen i'll generally skip all the questions so don't worry about it okay 
Mr. Jimenez became a pilot. Direct object. Uh, here, a pilot is used as a uh, it's a predicate noun phrase or predicate noun number. We can call it a predicate noun. Okay. Uh, okay. Mr. Jimenez is the subject. Okay. What is the verb? Became. Okay. So ask the question. Subject plus verb plus what? Or who? The question. Remember the question. Subject plus verb plus what or whom? Will you get an answer? Tell me. If you do that here, will you get an answer? Mr. Jemnes became what? What did he become? Pilot. He became a pilot. Okay. But now what is a pilot? No. Pilot is a? No. Noun. Okay. So that's why I call it as a predicate noun. Okay. And uh, fine. That, but uh, you can also call it an object. Okay. Direct object. Nothing wrong with that. People who have understood it as a direct object, you are correct. There is nothing wrong in that understanding. Okay. Okay. He needs a new car. What is this a new car? Direct object, indirect object. Direct object. Direct, direct object. object. Right. Yes. Carmen gives him the books. Direct object. The books is a direct object. And what uh, what is the indirect object here? Them. Very good. Them. Okay. Carmen gives them. Okay. Okay. Now, you have to use this word, my sister, as a uh, direct object. OK, not as a subject, but as a direct object. So look at this example, the boy. Barbara sees. Whom did she see, Barbara? The boy. The boy. OK. So is it following the question? Subject, verb, whom? Barbara saw whom? The boy. So the boy becomes a direct object. Clear? OK, so they have used the boy as a direct object. OK, so like that, you have to create sentences here. Okay. Uh, my sister. Anyone wants to try? Wants to try making a sentence? People who try will have a much better understanding. My sister buys You're using my sister as a uh, subject. I want it as an object, direct object. So start with something else now. Uh, Ram loves object. Ram loves my sister. Simple, right? It was that simple. Okay. Okay. Next one. A new car. Are rest of the people dead? They have left. I bought a new car. I bought a new car. Very good. Okay. 
people who are perpetually on a mute do you know what is the meaning of perpetual perpetual anyone perpetual is never ending always like that okay sign students perpetual motion you guys would have studied it something that keeps on moving it does not need any energy so look at this image here our sun as a perpetual source of energy continuous so long never ending okay never ending or never changing will the will the sun's energy ever get over no no sir okay in this sentence who is the subject Sun. Sun. Sun is a subject. Okay. okay. And uh, what is the verb? Perpetual. Perpetual. Huh? Here I have written what is perpetual. Perpetual is used as a. Ah. Yes. Uh, so what is the verb? Is. Is very good. And uh, the person who said is is a verb. Can you also tell the rest of us what type of verb it is? There are different auxiliary types. Verb. Auxiliary verb or a helping yeah. verb. Okay, okay, good, good. So our son is subject verb. What is the object here? Energy. don't look for a word you can also look for a phrase as in set of two source or three words source of energy source of energy. 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 energy okay so what i was saying here is people who are on per perpetual mute what do i mean by perpetual mute from the starting till the end their mute is never ending this mute symbol is never ending people who are like that i will start picking your names then you will feel bad you won't be able to answer so start participating okay i do not just want few people to just keep on answering i want everyone to participate okay jackie third one Jackie, how can we use Jackie as a direct object? Put a subject. Think of any subject. Okay, let me ask people now. So. <clears throat> there is sure. let's make a sentence here with jackie my best friend is jackie my best friend is jackie theek hai fine okay okay so number 4 but now now we have to use it as indirect object okay okay so <clears throat> i'll do this first one so that you guys get an understanding or a clarity here okay uh father brought 
the children a set of crayons, a box of crayons. Father bought. Father is the subject, bought is the verb. Okay. The children a set of crayons. Father bought what? What did the father buy? Set of crayons. So that becomes a direct object. Okay. For whom did father buy? The children. For whom or to whom? The children. children. So children became indirect object. Okay. Can somebody try this one? A puppy. The boy. The boy brought a new puppy for her lover. His lover. Huh? Huh? Louder, louder. The boy brought huh? a new puppy. Huh? Okay. For his lover. For his lover. Hmm. The boy bought. What did the boy uh, boy uh, buy? What did the boy, uh, boy buy? Puppy. Puppy. Okay. So okay. this so puppy this becomes puppy what? what? Derek. Right. Right. Yes. Remember the question. Remember the question. So that's why I was that's saying write the, the question. This thing. The boy bought what? He bought the puppy. puppy. Right? right? Yes. So puppy is what? We have used it, as, used a it as a direct object. Direct object. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's change that, and we have to use it as indirect, right? Huh. We have to use it as a indirect object. Okay. So. Uh, the boy bought a ball. Okay, somebody said the bo uh, the boy bought a ball. Okay, for whom? Puppy. For the puppy. Okay, so your sentence can you can write the sentence as <coughs> the boy bought a. Ball for the puppy. Okay, so the boy subject bought verb. Ask yourself this question: What did the boy buy? What did the boy buy? What ball? Ball. ball. Okay. <coughs> so ball becomes so a ball becomes for whom did the boy, did the boy buy this? Buy this puppy. 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 Okay, indirect. Okay. Now, the reason why you guys are getting confused is because somewhere in your mind, your mind told you that whichever comes first will be direct, and whichever comes later will be indirect. It's not like that. Okay. What is the difference in these two sentences? <clears throat> Any difference? Okay, look at the second sentence. Who is the subject? Boy. Verb bought. What did the boy buy? Hmm.
boy is the subject bot is the verb what did the boy buy did he buy the puppy or did he buy a ball ball look at the second sentence the man bought did he buy the girl or did he buy the red rose red rose here you are clear so why are you not clear here here in the second sentence all of us were clear that the man did not buy the girl the man bought red roses so why are we having a doubt sir couldn't it be that the boy bought the puppy no then here the man would have bought the girl but here you are clear all of you are clear no sir man did not buy the a girl the man bought a, girl, a red uh, bought red roses so here why are you thinking that the man bought the puppy the man bought what what did the man buy uh, the boy puppy the puppy ball ball the ball the boy bought what a ball for whom the puppy or <clears throat> let's not keep it bought let's put it brought as in bringing something the boy brought something for the for whom for the puppy what was that something so boy brought something what is that something he brought a ball so again in both these sentences tell me who is the direct object and who is the indirect object in the first sentence and in the second sentence first sentence ball direct object indirect object puppy direct object ball in the first sentence you are saying that the direct object is hmm tell me what did you say somebody said right ball ball okay so does it, does this answer our question boy bought what ball right okay indirect object puppy puppy yes okay okay look at the second look sentence the second sentence direct object direct object boy brought, boy brought. what did the, boy. what did the boy brought ball ball puppy puppy yeah. what did the boy brought sorry what did the boy uh, bring did he bring the puppy ball. or did he bring the ball 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 okay so who is the for whom did or to whom did he bring this puppy are you indeed for whom iske liye puppy puppy for the puppy in both these sentences you see that the direct object and indirect object they did not change they are the same did they change no no so will the me meaning of the sentence change do you think the meaning of the sentence will change <clears throat> the sentences all of you would have
of this particular way of this particular sound is breaking voice is breaking way of writing most of you don't know how to write like this right now in the sentence the girls say something sir your voice is breaking okay one second hold on Okay, so mm, bring back. Okay, third one, grandfather. We have to use it as a indirect object. Look at the example here. From this example, you should be able to I highlighted what you can change here. Look at the last sentence. The man bought the girl red roses. The man bought his uh, grandfather red roses. Very good. Who was this? Harneet. Very good. Thank you. So man bought the the man bought his grandfather red roses. <clears throat> okay. Okay. This is let's see. Okay. So let's move on to the next topic. That is definite and indefinite articles. <coughs> okay. Okay. So articles. There are just three articles in the English language. That is a and the. Okay. Only three articles. That is. A and the. Okay. Many a times I have pe uh, seen people misplace the or put it incorrectly where it is not required, they are putting it, or where it is required, they might not be putting it. Uh, in place of a, a, they might put the. So, like that, people go wrong in the usage of articles. Okay. So, We are going to learn how to work with articles and understand articles better. <laughs> okay. Now, articles, there are two types. One is called a definite article. Okay. And one is called a indefinite article. <clears throat> All of you know what is the meaning of definite? Somebody here who does not know the meaning of definite somebody uh, who has a doubt on it definite means something that's defined that has a shape that has a color that has 
some structure within itself indefinite cannot be defined air can you define air come on guys i need some kind of response from people this is not like a writing class where you can sleep i want some kind of a response from people or i might as well give you recorded classes i asked a very simple question what is air is it defined or not defined defined is defined okay can you tell me where is air can you pinpoint and tell me where is air it's not defined it's indefinite right defined. it's everywhere what is god indefinite Definite. okay uh things which does not have a boundary as such things which cannot be put into uh <clears throat> any box any confinement they are called they are indefinite things which can be put into a box which can be defined are called definite so in our, in english there are two types of articles one is definite articles and one is indefinite articles now what is a definite article the t h e the is a definite article so please understand make a visual picture in your mind think of the as something that will put something in a box the has the power to put something in a jail to lock something inside in a confinement that is the power of this word the some people call it the 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 whatever however you want to call it okay so the this article most of the times you will use it to identify a person or a thing okay the is used to identify a person or a thing in most cases look at the examples here i already know man if you say like that i already know man instead of i already know the man okay the sentence here is using a definite article it's putting this word man inside a box inside a jail it's defining this man or it is telling us that somehow somewhere we know this man if you think about this sentence imagine there is no the here the is not mentioned i already know man do you think the meaning is correct then no this specifying i already know man no the should be the we already the should be there. there right i yes. already know the man the man why did we put the because there is a requirement or we need to put man into some boundary that is what this word the is doing okay <clears throat> okay she met the woman who won the lottery again can we omit this word the here she met women who won the lottery no no right right yes okay, okay. we have to we have, have to use the letter the okay so imagine if you are writing something and you misplace this the or you do not write this the will your sentence mean something else will the sentence meaning go wrong yes no. yes of course it will go wrong 
the sentence will move, mean something else totally so look at the power of this word t h e the it's a very powerful word in the english language and if you are using it incorrectly what english have we learned since class 3 or 2 class 2 i believe we start using the word the very often from that uh, from those standards so if you are wrong here what english did we learn in all these years in 13 20 years of our life so if you are making a mistake here in articles do you think you will ever be scored above 6.5 Do you think you deserve it? No. No. Okay, that is why if there is more than two or three errors in articles A and the, if there are more than three errors in the whole of the essay, forget your band six point five and above score. You're below band. Uh, you're at band six point five or below. you will never cross that okay so please understand and learn grammar <clears throat> for a better score in ielts okay okay so third sentence this is the book that i told you about again try and omit this word the this is book that i told you about will that make sense no in most cases no okay so you have to use the word the okay so what is the the is a definite article in the english language it is used to identify a particular person or a particular thing okay if you are missing the or if you are not putting it in the appropriate places you will go wrong and uh, you know sentence might mean something totally different so understand this we will be doing few exercises to learn this okay now <clears throat> let me also tell you what is an indefinite article okay now indefinite article is <clears throat> something uh, or used to talk about something that is unfamiliar <clears throat> or something that is in general okay an indefinite article is used to describe something that is unfamiliar or something that is found in general or something that happens in general okay what are indefinite articles a and a and these are indefinite articles okay a is used before consonant okay i'll explain you this and is used before a vowel sound okay let's look at the examples Okay. Look at the first example. He sees a stranger on the corner. He sees a stranger on the corner. Does this person he does he know the stranger? No. No. He does not know the stranger. Okay? Can you put he sees the stranger on the corner? no no in a story, story we can we can okay if you are talking about a story imagine there is a story you are reading a novel okay and the novel talks about a strange person or a stranger okay they have defined this person and they have like okay this person was walking through this and he looked like that uh, blah 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 you know some definition and uh, later during the scene uh you are seeing this sentence he sees the stranger on the corner now 
when we use the stranger here in this scenario in this novel kind of a scenario that i explained right now in this scenario the stranger is referring to the stranger that we defined that we explained okay so can we use the stranger of course if the stranger if we have talked about the stranger earlier in the previous sentences i can use the stranger he is not unknown to me now i know him the story knows him the reader the person who is reading he knows who is the stranger okay so like that i can use he sees the stranger on the corner when i use the stranger the stranger has to be defined previously but right now looking at the sentence as it is without anything else right now we do not know the stranger i do not know how he looks i do not know if he is uh, uh indian if he is an english man if he is tall if he is dark if he is handsome i don't know what he is that's why i use the word he sees a stranger on the corner understood this difference between the usage of a and the in this particular sentence yes yes sir Okay. Did you buy an apple or an orange? What does the sentence mean? Did you buy an apple or an orange? Varun, can you explain me what does the sentence mean? Sir. sir yes uh, sir question is not clear sir yes question is right in front of you my dear on your screen all of you can see the screen right yes yeah. yes he was asking did you buy an apple or an orange okay do you know this apple do we know which apple no did we describe the apple did we, do you know it is red color green color big apple small apple sweet apple sour apple do you know anything about the apple no it has not described it it is not been described right so it is indefinite it is not been described alle right? so it is indefinite so what will we use before indefinite a or an a or an okay so the apple was indefinite that is why we used an okay okay now let me rewrite the sentence and ask you something else a small deviation from this sentence okay same sentence but in a different way did <coughs> you buy the red apple or the blue orange <clears throat> definitely how how did i define it apple yeah. is defined now apple is defined now yes. how did i define it How did I define it? Red. 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 By using red. By using red. Okay. okay. Now it becomes definite. I put it in a box. Did you buy the red apple? Okay. Okay. what will come did you buy the apple or did you buy a apple we saw in reliance fresh 
смотри. The. Okay, two people are the. saying the. 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 Why the? Why the? By the apple. apple. Is it defined? Yes, it's, it's defined. defined. Okay. This one is yeah. real uh, reliance fish. Okay. Did we define Reliance Fresh? Which Reliance Fresh? Kalamashiri, uh, New Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore. Which Reliance Fresh? Did we define that? No. 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 So do we know, need to put the before it? No. No. Okay. Okay. So let's put, let's define Reliance Fresh also. The Reliance Fresh in uh, now apple is also defined reliance fresh is also defined both are defined did you buy the apple we saw in the reliance fresh in kochi where is the reliance fresh kochi so, so we know where, we it, know is. where it is. We can define it. There is some definition to it. That's why I put the. Okay. One more word should come here. That's all. Now it's perfect. Did you buy the apple we saw in the Reliance Fresh store in Kochi? Okay. Next thing, next sentence. Is the woman a good lawyer? Is the woman a good lawyer? We are asking. Okay. We are not defining something, but rather we are asking about one person's quality. So we cannot be definite here. Can we put the here when we are asking if she is a good lawyer? No, no right? Logically, that does not make sense also. If we, we, if we know a little bit of mathematics, we will be able to apply some logic and say, if I'm putting the, then I'm defining the lawyer as good. If I'm defining it as good, then how am I asking it as a question? That does not make sense, right? There's no logic in that. So generally when you're asking a question, you will not, or most of the times you will not have a definite article. Definite article is the, definite, the, starts with D, the. Remember is like that, definite article, the. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Last sentence, she has an idea. Okay, now you would be wondering, I think this most of us know, where are you supposed to use an in front of vowels. vowels? Okay, in front of vowels. So if you have apple, apple starts with A. A is a vowel, so you will use an. Good. G is not a vowel, so a. Uh. Okay. An is used whenever you start, uh, whenever the next word starts with a vowel sound. Idea, I, an. Okay, this I am sure most of you already know. Okay. Okay. So look at the sentences. So here they have explain what is the difference between these two sentences let's look at this as well and then look into the exercise okay i want an apple is the apple defined an apple i want an apple is it defined which apple no no okay so here he has explained what it means 
I do not see an apple. I do not know the shape, the color, nothing. But I feel hungry for one. Okay. He just wants any type of apple that you can give him. His emotion is that he's hungry. I want an apple. Possibly he's like, I'm very hungry. Please give me one apple. I want an apple. Like that he's saying. The next sentence, I want the apple. In Malayalam, Vashi Bidjit, he is now talking. Or in uh, Hindi, Akkad ke bol raha wo. There are many apples. I want the apple. He's pointing out towards one particular apple. So what is he doing? I'm choosing between the apple and the orange I see before me. So imagine yourself. You went to your friend's house and he brought one apple and an orange uh, and one orange. So what will you tell him? I want an apple or I want the apple. Imagine you are uh, you have gone to your friend's house. He brings a plate to you. Okay, in the plate there is one orange and one apple. What will you tell him? I want an apple, or will you tell him I want the apple? The apple. The apple. You will point. You will define. You know what apple you want. If you say I want an apple to the friend now, you know what he should do. He will go back to the kitchen and he will pick any apple he feels like and bring it to you. He might not give you the apple that he brought earlier, the one which is sitting next to the orange. He might not give you that because that's what you, you told him. I want an apple. You just told him your desire, what you want. Understand the subtle difference, the slight small difference between an, the, uh, a and the. Okay, these three words. Okay, so <laughs> let's move on. So the boy. A boy. So this is boy is singular. The is definite. That's why they are saying it as calling it as singular definite. The boy. Okay. A boy. Boy again singular. A. A is indefinite. So singular indefinite. When it becomes plural. Here it was singular. The boy. When it becomes plural, it becomes the boys. Just you will just add s here. That's all. Okay. But if you look here, a boy will not become a boys. No, it will simply become boys. This most of us already know. Okay. Here we are comparing singular and plural forms. The boy will become the boys. A boy is talking about one boy. If you want plural of this, you have to remove this a uh, and you will say boys. Just boys, that's all. Okay. So that's something that most of you would already know. Okay. So let's look at the exercise and finish up the exercise quickly. Did you buy a Ford or Dash Chevy? These are cars, Ford, Chevrolet, those cars. So somebody is asking a question. Did you buy a Ford or a a Chevy. The answers are a and the. Any one of them. Even if you don't know, just guess now. Just three. 
so 33.33% of the times you might be correct okay so at least try that's the point okay if you try you will fail when you fail you will understand why you fa failed and when you understand why you failed you will become better without falling nobody learns to walk so don't be afraid to fail okay so answer that's what i'm saying participate okay does he know dash on the corner imagine the situation if you are asking this to somebody is the man defined or indefined to you defined defined, defined. so what will you put the the man on the corner so imagine if you are saying something like this you are standing in a market you and your friend you are pointing towards one person and you are like eda do you know that man okay do you know that man another form of that is a different form altogether but you can also say do you know the man you will not say do you know a man okay so that understanding is what i'm asking you to gain here she has <coughs> dash secret to tell you okay now i'll ask people okay sujita <clears throat> answer this one she has sujita you there no sir she was here she is not here okay she is not here hmm. okay Mm, Harneet, would you like to answer? Yes. She has a secret to tell you. She has a secret to tell you. Okay. Why did we use a secret? This word itself says that it's indefined. Nobody knows about it. It's not known. So of course she has a secret to tell you. Okay. What time does dash train leave? the the train leave the. of course you will ask this question only if you are standing in a railway station and you are asking to somebody asking somebody what time does will you ask a train leave then you will say which train or you will you ask pointing towards that train and you will be like what time does this the train leave right so imagine yourself in the situation and that will give you a much better understanding of which article you are supposed to use okay <clears throat> okay uh, we need dash hot dogs and a bottle of coke the bottle the hot dogs the hot dogs and a bottle of coke okay coke uh, did you see the accident the accident of course right if you are asking somebody this accident has already occurred somebody is already hurt we know about the accident so we will use did you see the accident he met dash guests as they arrived the guests the guests okay dash teacher is angry with us the teacher the teacher the teacher okay i can't find the key the key the keys or the key however okay okay is that is that a snake a snake in that tree is that a snake in that tree, tree. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Now we have to make this singular noun. Okay. Orange is a noun here. 
okay you have to change this singular into plural okay so tell me what all changes will happen they gave us oranges can you say an oranges no the no oranges no orange they gave us the oranges or you can simply say they gave us oranges okay so here in this exercise we will not change the uh, article okay we can say both here he gave us the oranges or they gave us oranges both ways we can say it okay i like the book very much change book into plural books books i like books very much i like the book i like very books very much okay do you often visit the farm there uh, change farm do you often visit the farms there the farms there okay okay the a rabbit a rabbit is hiding behind it change rabbit to plural rabbits are hiding behind it rabbits are hiding behind it okay katrina likes to play with the uh, change kitten into plural kittens can we use the kittens no yes no yes, yes of course right yes. and since there is already a the we will say it as katrina has to play with the kitten <coughs> okay in this sentence there was only one kitten now we are just saying that there are many kittens that's all but he she knows those kittens it's her kittens probably probably okay it's not uh, she's not um, uh, it's not indefinite for her it's defined for her okay okay uh okay montel has dogs and cats change this into singular montel has montel has cats as a dog and a cat as a dog and a cat, cat. okay montel has a dog and a cat okay uh, i want to buy the roses i want to buy it make it into singular i want to buy a rose a rose a rose Okay, understood. Good. There are gifts for you. There is a gift for you. There is a gift for you. There is a gift for you. Okay. So, R is for plural. Is is for singular. that is also something that we realized here r is used for plural is is used for singular okay can you hear the baby is crying can you hear the baby crying can you hear the baby cry can you hear the baby the baby cry right sir patto sir huh बेबी क्राइंग दैट ऑल्सो यू कैन पुट आईडियली दैट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर कैन यू हियर द बेबी जस्ट बेबीज विल चेंज टू बेबी बी ए बी वाई okay can you hear the baby cry okay. crying okay 
when you say can you hear the baby cry uh possibly you know it's it's not a continuous action it's intermittent sometimes you can hear it sometimes you not you are not able to hear it edike uh, in between in between you are able to hear the baby cry but when you put ing can you hear the baby crying the baby is continuously crying you can hear it and you are asking your friend can you hear the baby crying okay that's the difference this is called continuous and uh, simple tense that i will discuss when we start with verbs okay but right now just understand we are supposed to change babies into singular so can you hear the baby cry right. okay okay sir okay do you have brothers and sisters do you have a brother or a sister brother or a sister correct do you have a brother or a sister okay so i think uh, yeah it's 329 also so it's 330 almost so i'll be closing the session here today so few basic things we learned today okay that is noun we started with a noun we understood what is a proper noun what is a common noun then we looked into a subject then we looked into a predicate we looked into what is a direct object we looked into what is a indirect object and uh, then we looked into articles indefinite articles definite articles that is a and the we discussed all of this today in uh, today's grammar class from tomorrow uh, tomorrow la in the next class we will be have we will be starting with adjectives next class will be on a monday same time okay so every monday and friday uh, we will be having this grammar class this is open for anyone and we'll be learning by doing exercises rather than doing uh, definitions or things like that okay we will not be concentrating on definitions and things but rather we will be concentrating on exercises so that there is some practical benefit out of learning grammar here okay so that's all for today guys thank you so much for your time have a wonderful day ahead if anyone here wants this particular book this is a very good book and if you want to access this book or if you want a copy of this book i can share it and uh, this book this whole book is a very simple book it does not take much time to explain things but rather it concentrates on exercises and many people have you know benefited from using this book uh, so if anyone here wants this book you can also uh, you know I, i can share it in the group so you can let me know okay so that's it that's it guys thank you so much 4:30 writing class as usual okay so tomorrow we have a class tomorrow is saturday okay. yes yes dear tomorrow you have a class okay okay monday to saturday 4:30 uh that's set okay 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 thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you